all loaded up and ready to head out to Melbourne. So, so we are leaving the house, taking our boat, which is not our boat anymore, to the new owner. So the Scarab 255 has found a new home. Yay, so we are looking for now a center console uh, fishing boat, which when we initially started looking for boats after we sold the Yamaha, was definitely not on our list of boats to buy. I think we were looking for more of like a pleasure, fun time boat. We had no idea that it would turn, that our boating experience would turn so much into a fishing experience. So we are in the fishing, sport fishing capital of the world, you know, the east coast of Florida. There's tons of sport fishing. Pretty much 99% of the people around here, that's what they do. And so our new groups of friends that we're hanging out with doing boating stuff, that's all what they do. So um, between us wanting to fish more and then our new group of friends and people that we're going to hang out with and possibly go offshore and fishing with. So this seems like the logical choice to go. Scarab is more of a pleasure boat, wakeboarding sport boat, not, um, not designed for fishing. It's a dual console, which means you walk through the center of the portion of the boat. You don't have good access to around the sides of the boat for fishing. If you were overboard, you know, look, fishing overboard, looking for fish under the, under the bottom and stuff like that. So center console moves the console towards the center like it, the name says and then you can walk completely around the boat if you're chasing a fish fighting a fish on a line or whatever and so it's just um you know, that's what they're designed for designed for is to more fishing more fishing so it'll still have a porty uh a, a porty a porta potty for you know emergencies the child that's in the back and you can't see um well and you're out all day so as a, a woman, I definitely <laughs> want a place to go potty. So the next boat that we choose, we want to be sure that it's uh, going to actually be the right fit for us. We bought this boat, what, in March? In March. Uh, with our limited experience with the Yamaha, we, we, we kind of like the Yamaha because we spent time on the lakes in Arizona with it. Uh, we went to the Keys with it, and it was a 19-foot boat, and in three-foot waves, it was just too small, so we said, we need a bigger boat. Well, we got a similar boat, but bigger. It was a 25-and-a-half-foot boat. Um, the, the size of it was fine. It's just not made for um, waters that include waves. It's made for lakes and rivers and uh, protected waterways. Um, to be out on the open ocean with three to five foot what, um, swells and waves, it's just too flat of a bottom. It's too bumpy of a ride. It rolled too much on the water um, to be enjoyable for fishing, let alone it didn't support fishing as much as it should. Yeah, it was definitely not an enjoyable ride um, on those bigger waves, at least not for me. Um, definitely not for Riley. And uh, I don't even think Frank really enjoyed it all that much either. I motored through it, but it wasn't enjoyable. So. We're gonna, center consoles have a bigger V on it, a deeper hull. Um, they're designed to cut through the waves more to go offshore, even though it may be a slightly smaller boat, being the boats we're looking at are in the 23 foot range instead of 25. Being a deeper V and wider beam, they are more um, suited for that type of water. So now that brings us to what brand boats are we looking for? So we've discussed doing either uh, monohull style boats and also catamaran style boats. The catamaran style would be a, a company called Twin V. They're made in South Florida. Um, they do really well. It's a good looking boat, but there are limited numbers, limited support groups, um, dealership network smaller, um, prices similar to the other boats. Um, it is something we would would still want to look at. Um, there are a few quirks about it, being a mon mono hull or a, a twin hull like that, docking, um, some wave states when you have following seas are unruly because one hull may be pushed more than the other hull. Um, so it takes a little bit of a learning curve um, to anticipate those kinds of conditions, which I'm not sure if we want to, we're not even fully learned on 
monohull, let alone go oh. to mon- uh, Catamaran. Learned so. on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're still getting our sea legs, so to speak, and uh, have a hard time um, with some conditions, you know, docking, especially with um, tides, uh, currents, and wind, wind. states. Wind. Um, blows us a b- bunch. But part of that was the design of the scarab because it was a very flat bottom boat got pushed around quite a bit by the wind and turned so hopefully uh, a normal monohull that sits uh, deeper in the water with an outboard that sits down further acting more like a rudder system um, is easier for Susan and I to operate around the docks. Yeah actually taking another boating class um, next weekend all day class. We, we did use the boat quite a bit since March. We put 60 hours on it, which um, is a lot, supposedly, for the boating community um, in a, a short amount of time. So that would have put us around the you know, 250-hour mark for the year. So um, that seems um, like a higher number because we see several used boats that are two or three years old that have less than 200 hours on them. So we were using the boat quite a bit. Um, it just um, took a while to learn. I was just barely getting comfortable docking. Understood what I was doing, but there's times where I'd still get behind the boat. So, um, and I know Susan was never comfortable with it. Never comfortable with it. So, different boat brands that we have been, I mean, we've discussed every boat band. Um, we've looked at every center console brand there is we've looked at all the twin hole or the catamaran style um, fishing boats that are available and we've decided though you know we would I I think it would be more comfortable on a catamaran style I think we have decided to eliminate uh, the catamaran uh, fishing um, center consoles just for uh, the purpose that we we're not 100% sure we're ready to try to learn um, on a catamaran uh, just yet. Try to get a monohull operation down. So uh, the here are the um, brands that we've kind of narrowed it down to. You'll have to understand too that we have never seen any of these boats in person because there is absolutely no inventory to go and check out these boats. The, it, it's insane. You, <laughs> none of the dealers have any boats. Everybody's bought uh, boats and the pandemic has caused a, a supply shortage. And so we've been doing a lot of watching YouTube videos. Um, and getting on different forums and reading, uh, you know, things on like the whole truth and, and uh, we're on a, the center console group. And so our knowledge is really just based on those things. Um, so the Cobia, uh, the Sailfish, and um, sportsman. the Sportsman are the th- three right that we've pretty much narrowed it down to he went and looked at he actually got to sit on a sea hunt the other day and and a sea chaser and a sea chaser and um he showed me the videos when he got home and i was like no the, the layout was just not <laughs> correct so you know along with trying to find a new center console we still have the same requirements we had before we have a, a bridge clearance issue getting into our canal home where the boat's going to be kept and so um, a lot of these center consoles come standard with the fiberglass hardtops, which are very heavy. And so even though we could find a way to make it, uh, to hinge it and lower it, it's just too heavy to operate. So we've really had to limit our choices to boats that we could order without a hard top, And we could add on a soft T-top covering that can be retractable later um, after we get the boat, have a local welder make it from scratch and make it to our specifications and then cover it with a canvas cover instead of the fiberglass hard tops which have a lot of things built into them speakers and electronic boxes and even misters and everything now to keep you cool but uh, we just can't have that it's too heavy on top of the boat for us yeah so even though it would be nice to have you know those extra little features we just fortunately we are stuck because of the um, the canal bridge 
clearance issues that we have. So that's why we've narrowed it down to these few. Um, and there's about eight brands in total that we that would fit our requirements, and we narrowed we eliminated some of those because of uh, what people have said on the forums about build qualities and longevities and newer companies and items we just couldn't get on the boat even though we could get it without a hard top we couldn't get other options on it and so um, these three boats really do fit us the sportsman is the smallest of the group um, I, I went into it saying minimally I'd like to see a 24 25 foot boat and the Cobia and the Selfish are both 24, whereas the Sportsman's um, just at 23. So it's just a little bit shorter. So yeah, uh, we would love to see any one of these in person, but we don't think that's going to happen. Um, we did find out there's a boat show in Tampa um, the second week of September, I think it is? No. Or is it the first weekend of September? Anyway, there's a boat show coming up. Um, we are tentatively supposed to be going to that boat show. However, there is zero vendors listed as showing up for this boat show. And he was talking with a dealer at one of them. I don't remember if it was Kobe or Sailfish, but the, the salesman was like, there's no inventory to bring to these boat shows. So We'll probably won't be going to a boat show because there will be no point in going to um, a show with absolutely no inventory to look at. So we're probably going to be buying a boat pretty much sight unseen other than the YouTube videos that um, we have been watching. We, right? have, we have been looking at used lots, um, looking around um, just to see the brands because the problem with buying a used boat, they all have come with the T-tops. Um, nobody is silly. The hard like, T-tops. The hard T-tops. Nobody's silly like us having to require a man with no T-top on a center console. So at least we're trying to find used ones that we can go look at the brands. Maybe not the exact models, but the, the brand quality to see the fit and finish, how they're put together, how the you know quality control is on them. Um, so at least we can see the brands and see um, if we like the way that they are built. But so far we have not found any that we can go look at. I mean, we really haven't found anything. The, the Yamaha and the Scarab were bought with um, little knowledge on boating. Now that we've had more experience, especially with the Scarab, and we understand what we're looking for in build quality and um, the way things are put together, laid out, uh, even electrical wiring and plumbing, the way the, the build systems work, the way the drainage for the decks work, all those things are now things that we kind of look for, um, having more experience on the boats. Right. So, um, yeah, so we're looking actually at buying a, a brand new boat as to opposed to a used boat uh, this time. So this would be our first brand new boat purchase. Um, and we're only really doing so because one, uh, there's no, um, I, because of the hardtop issue with the canal, that's probably number one, I would say, because um, none of the used boats we were finding um, have the, the, soft, the soft top. Tops. Two, the cost of boats right now, the people are, listing up for their used boats <laughs> it, is, it is actually cheaper to buy a new boat than a used boat currently yep new brand boat, new boat new boat or used boats up to two years old with low hours less than 100 hours are selling for about a 20 percent premium over new boat prices because they're available because there's no availability for any boats on the market um, even a brand new boat, wait times are between five to seven months usually, generally. I think they're even longer than that, some of On them. Some of the brands are longer. Yeah. So, so yeah, there's, there's that reason. There goes a the boat. And, uh, so we will be boatless for a little bit of time, but I think it's worth the wait to get A, what we want, B, the cost savings. In the long run, it will be a cost savings. Right. Because none of the used boats are, are, are reasonable. I mean, they're all... There was one 
there was a cobia that we found that was reasonable, but it was in Alabama. <laughs> For example, the sportsman that we are looking at, the the one example of a used boat that is near us, which is in Georgia, about six hours away, it is three years old with 250 hours on it, which is a decent amount of hours on it, and they want $27,000 above brand new pricing. Above brand new pricing. And I guess you just kind of gave it away that we've now narrowed it down to the sportsmen of those brands. Oh, it's just, just for an example. <laughs> it's okay. We can say. That's that's probably the... Uh, the leader at this point. The leader at this point. Yeah. And the reason for that? Um, I think the majority reason of it is the layout of the, the interior of the boat. Um, the, the back fishing area goes completely up to the transom so you can stand against the transom and fish off the, the rear of the boat if you needed to after the boat and um, it has good um, fish lockers it has a nice live well and a tackle station in it so it fits all the bills it's just a bit shorter than what I would would want um, and, and, the, and the back of the boat was super important to me because I feel like you know, any of the other boat, like the Sea Hunt that he was showing me, it had uh, like a bench seat in the back, which is great. That would be great for Riley, but it didn't, it didn't fold up like the uh, sportsman does. And so you're always got the bench seat in your way. And so when you're fishing from the back, you're standing on you're standing the seat on to it. fish off the back of the boat. And to me, that doesn't serve as far as safety goes. Um, I don't want to be standing on bench seats to be fishing. And so for fighting a big fish that I'm hoping at some point, someday, some, someday we'll, we'll <laughs> we'll catch. Yeah. I want to be safer. So that was, uh, that's my, that is my issue with the sea hunt. I just don't feel, you know, that the layout is, is right for us. Um, so it does have, a, a, like I said, the sportsman has a, a seat in the back that folds up. Um, it's got the uh, seating up in front as well with cushions and a backrest. So, you know, Riley wants to sit up there while we're underway. She can. And then you can remove those backrests and put them away and take those cushions off. Or if she's not with us, obviously we can take all that all off and uh, store it in the garage while we go out to go fishing. Um, it does have a porta potty, so that was that's good. It's not the electric head that we were hoping for, but it is what it is. Um, and like he said, you know, the every it has everything else that we really want um, in in the boat. So we think we think that's the right decision. <laughs> And if not, we can sell and buy another boat. <laughs> uh, and we're hoping, to, you know, we're hoping to use this boat until we're ready to, you know, leave Merritt Island and and uh, do the next phase of our life, which we we are still thinking will be live aboard, um, and then we will get our catamaran. Um, so, right, that's the plan still. <laughs> That's the plan. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway. And Riley, you want to say a quick hello? No. No? Okay. Bye-bye. Okay, so it's several hours later. And Frank drove to this boat dealer. Right. So, we stopped where? At the Boat and Motor Superstore. The Boat and Motor Superstore. And guess what is sitting here? It's a sportsman. It's a bigger sportsman. But there is a smaller sportsman that is somebody else's. There's the closest uh, sportsman dealer. Uh, we were told that they didn't have any of the boats. But they had two of the brands that we were looking for. The Twin V and the Sportsman. Um, they told that we could stop by and possibly see... Um, boats if they had any on their websites they didn't show any so we came down here anyways just trying to get some information and lo and behold they did have the boats here um, customer boats none available for sale 
uh, but at least we are able to see them, walk on them, touch them, um, see the build quality, see how things were laid out, actually see the physical size of the boats and how they would accompany the three of us uh, if we were out, out fishing on them. So we took a walk on the Twin V, took a walk on the Sportsman, saw all the colors and things like that, and so... So we are um, now going to be the owners of a new Sportsman 232. Um, you said probably about December. So um, it was a, not an impulse buy. We knew what we were looking for. We know that we have to order one. We went ahead and put a small deposit. It holds our production spot while we were here. You know, the produ production allocation went from October to December that quick because they sold one last night. Um, they only get so many allocations a year. Um, so we went ahead and put the deposit just to hold that allocation spot. Right. He's uh, said probably in the next couple of weeks he can actually get us on one to do a sea trial. So they have a, a, another one coming in for a customer in two to three weeks, and when that comes in before they actually sell that to the customer, they have a few other customers they're going to take out on the boat that are interested or that ha are in the same position we are, where they put deposits down with actually, without actually getting a sea trial. They'll give us a chance to see the boat and drive on it and feel it on the water, and then we can continue from there. Yep. So that has been the uh, process of today from... We think we're going to do this to, oh, we just did it. So, anyway. Because we don't sit still for nothing. <laughs>